People often get anxious when preparing for case interviews, and a while back, Martin and I sat down to record a conversation on how to prepare for interviews with Bain & Company. We went back and watched that video as we were preparing an update, and we wrote down all of the things that changed, and you know what? Nothing has changed. That video is as relevant today as it was when we originally recorded it. There are two things that I would highlight that are worth pointing out. First of all, our website, joinbain.com, has become bain.com slash careers, and you should go to that URL to find the most current information about Bain & Company. The second thing I would point out is I refer to a program called Connect with Bain, and that program is now expanded and become Experience Bain, and it includes a huge array of live and online events. Other than that, all of the advice in here is as relevant as it was back when we recorded it. Enjoy the video. Three, two, one, go. Hi, I'm Martin Potter. I work for Global Marketing. I'm here with Keith Bevins, who's our Global Head of Consultant Recruiting. I'm Keith. Hi. Good to see you again. Hey, Martin. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, so we wanted to have a chat about, you know, you're on campus a lot throughout the year. You meet with a lot of recruits. Mm -hmm. And you get asked, oftentimes get asked a lot of the similar questions. Yeah. So I figured it might be great to have a chat here. Let's go through some of these questions. Great. So first of all, sorry to age you here, you've been at Bain for almost 20 years now? Yeah, since 1996. 96. Um, so could you chat a little bit about your career path and what continues to excite you about working here? Yeah, I joined Bain & Company in 96 after finishing my bachelor's and master's uh, in electrical engineering. So I actually have an engineering background, not a business background, but I knew I wanted to go back to business school at some point. So I joined Bain & Company because I heard that it was a great way for me to get good business training and hopefully end up at one of the top business schools in the world. Um, I worked for four years in our Chicago office, went to business school for two years, came back to Chicago in 2002, and have been in the Chicago office ever since. Uh, for the first 17 years of my career, I was client-facing, so from AC, associate consultant, all the way through to partner for several years, and then I made the transition to leading our global recruiting uh, full-time back in 2013. Let's cut to the chase. This is going on the part of the website which talks about what Bain looks for. Yep. You know, so what does Bain look for when it's hiring for our consulting teams? That's a great question. You know, we look for a bunch of different things for people that are recruiting to us from campus and from industry and from advanced degree programs. What I would say is first and foremost, we're looking for people that are problem solvers. We're looking for people that have an analytic mindset. They're comfortable with numbers. They're comfortable doing analytics. And the idea there is that we're working for some of the top companies working with their most senior executives, we're solving their toughest challenges, and we need people who have the analytic capability to tackle those challenges. The second thing that we look for is people who are able to connect with other people. You know, we're in a client service business and we're looking for people who we think can be successful in a client services environment. You know, where clients can trust their advice, where they can connect and listen to clients and learn from their clients. And then third, we're looking for people that thrive in team environments. We're not the type of firm where we go off and work on our own and then come back and deliver the answer. We work in teams, we collaborate as teams, we coach and we get coached, we teach and we get taught, and we work together to solve those problems as a team. And then un overarching all of those things, the analytics, the client skills, and the team skills, is a certain level of humility that every person at Bain has. We hire the best and the brightest students that are out there. We hire the best talent that we can find in industry and in all types of different programs. But it's important that those people come in with the humble attitude that it takes to learn and be successful in a place like Bain & Company. But how do you get all of this just from checking out a resume? Well, the resume is one part. And a lot of times we will have met people at different events and different marketing opportunities on campus. But when we get the resume, we look for a couple of things. First, I'd say we look for intellectual capacity. And a lot of times for MBA students, that's just looking back at their undergraduate institution. It's looking at their major. It's looking at their GPA. And it's really getting a sense for academically, how did they do in the classroom? The second thing that we look for is some type of professional maturity. And what I mean by that is we're looking for people who've had work experience, that have had to get up and sort of go into an office environment or go into a work environment, work on a team, work with other people, solve a challenge. And then the third thing is we look for is what I'll say is leadership. And really the question we're trying to answer there is can they make it happen? Have they ever been on the hook for something going uh, according to plan? And have they ever been on the hook for adjusting that plan when something goes wrong. So for example, if you were on campus and you were leading a conference and you were responsible for a panel discussion, um, that's really great and that's a great title and that's a great role. The problem is when your speakers don't show up because there was a snowstorm, how did you accommodate? How did you make sure that things came off according to plan? And when you think about what we do professionally, we're working for clients, we're looking at data, and we're doing a lot of different types of things that don't always go according to plan. And we're looking for people that have demonstrated the ability to, to adapt and roll with the punches and still hit the goal and still hit the target. 
And those three things are what we can find on the resume. And then it leads into the interview process and the other stages of recruiting that allow us to get to know them more and figure out who really is the best candidates and the best fit for what we do. Do you have any tips on like resume length, like one, two pages? I mean, is that not important? Yeah, no, for most people, the resume tends to be one page. And that's usually enough to highlight those three areas, both their educational background, their professional background, and some leadership and extracurricular activities. And we can see a lot of what we need to see on that. For people who've been working for several years, maybe they have a PhD or they're coming to us from industry, um, sometimes they go to two pages, but that's typically about as long as we'll see on a resume. Could you give us a quick overview of our typical consultant recruiting process? And I know that's kind of like a, it's a long process with a short question, but if you could give us a quick overview, that'd be great. So the typical process for recruits tends to be when they get to campus, uh, they'll meet us through our big on-campus presentation or on-campus event. A lot of times they have classmates that have either interned at Bain or worked at Bain before business school, and they'll get a chance to know us and our culture just by meeting their classmates and their peers. Um, at a lot of MBA programs, students will meet us even before they get to campus as part of our Connect with Bain program. And that's just an opportunity for them to learn about the industry and learn about Bain before they get to campus and decide if they even want to pursue that when they get to a campus in the fall. And Connect to Bain, that's a program that operates sometime in the summertime? Yeah, right. so that happens for students that are going into business schools that we recruit from. They have an opportunity in their home city or in the city they're moving to to meet with representatives and people from the local office and just, again, it's just a chance for them to get to learn about consulting, what is consulting, what is Bain & Company, what are the people like at Bain & Company? And we think it's a great way for them to just educate themselves on all of those things. And then when they get to campus, they're well informed and thinking about whether or not they want to pursue recruiting in the fall. So we do all of those marketing events, and then they get to campus, um, and they'll get to know us. They'll go to an industry presentation. Maybe they'll hear about our private equity practice, or our NPS work that we're doing, or our gender parity research. And then, if they choose to recruit with us, they'll submit an application, and that's a resume. Oftentimes, the cover letter is optional, but they can submit a cover letter. And then you go through the actual interview process. The interviews tend to be about two rounds. Uh, the first round is two traditional case interviews, and there's a lot of resources on our website, joinbain.com, to help them prepare for the interviews, in addition to other resources that are out there. And then a lot of times, the second round interview is in the local office that they're interviewing for, or it'll be very soon after the first round on campus. And the second rounds are usually about three interviews. Uh, two or three of them are case interviews. Sometimes one of the interviews is a resume interview and we'll just talk with you about your resume, we'll talk with you about your career experience. And what we're looking for there is not just your motivation for a job, but your motivation for a job with Bain & Company. And we wanna understand why a career in consulting is the right next step in your career and why Bain & Company is the right place to take that step. Is there a particular levels of interview, like the written interview or, or the, the, the case interview? Are they some of them that are more arduous than others? Some you have to prepare more for others? I mean, is there some, would you perhaps focus a little bit on the Tell us a little bit more about the written interview. Yeah, so as I think about the different interviews that we do, uh, we tend to do three different types at Bain & Company. We do a traditional case interview, which is just a conversation like we're having right now. Um, the written interview is very similar, except in that case, what'll happen is I'll give you a pack of slides and a question and give you some time to formulate your response. And what we find is that some candidates who may be a little bit nervous or a little bit apprehensive in a live dialogue actually do great with the extra time to sit, prepare their thoughts, and prepare for an interview after they've had some time to really think about things. So do they come back in with a, a PowerPoint or do they write stuff down? How does that work? How do they Yeah, that's that a great you? question. The, the pack itself is a set of PowerPoint slides with data. Uh, okay. It's usually pretty straightforward data. And then all we ask them to do is prepare one or two slides, handwritten slides with their recommendation on one and their rationale and supporting evidence on the other slide. And that is the written case. So I'll come into a room, there'll be a laptop there with me saying, okay, here's your information that you need, now formulate your, your response from this, or how does that? Yeah, actually what we'll do is we'll sit down for a few minutes. I'll introduce a business problem on a slide and say, you okay. know, here is a client, here is a problem that they have. Here are the two or three questions that they'd like for you to answer and make a recommendation. Okay. And after I give you that setup, we'll ask, we'll have a little bit of back and forth, maybe some clarifying questions. And I'll say, and by the way, we have this additional data available to help you formulate your analysis and your recommendation, and then you're on your way. We do provide a lot of great resources on joinbain.com for recruits to come and see what our traditional case interviews are like, what our written case interviews are like. There's also a great video on there that includes some be good, better, and best examples of answers to case interview questions. The way we think about the case interview is it's a great way for us to see who has the skills that would help them be successful on the job, and it's a great way for us to find the best talent on campus. 
And is there something that, um, that like a recruit can do on their own time to rehearse that? Like, could I, if I was coming in, if I had my interview tomorrow, could I grab my friend and sort of, and, I mean, is there a way you can prepare for this, you know, that, that you might recommend for that? Yeah, so the best ways that I've seen people prepare for case interviews, uh, I tie back to some of the classmates I had in business school. And what they would do is they would get together every weekend, starting, I don't know, a couple months before the interviews, and they would just, uh, the four of them would get together for breakfast. They were going to eat anyway. So one would give a case, one would receive a case, the other two would watch, yeah. and then they'd switch. First two would eat while one gave a case, the other received the case, and they would break for the day. Mm -hmm. And they would just do that over the course of several weeks heading into the interviews, and it worked great. All of them got consulting interviews, consulting offers, um, and it was a really good experience. The takeaway from that, though, is that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Case interviews aren't the type of thing you can prepare for in one weekend right before interviews. It's the type of thing you have to do a little bit over a long period of time, ideally out loud with someone. What I like to tell people is it's really funny how brilliant things sound up here and how crazy they sound coming out of your mouth. And you actually have to practice those things coming out of your mouth with a live person to get better at the interviews themselves. So grab a friend and go to the diner would be, would be the tip then. Would be great. And if they're doing you a favor, make sure you buy them breakfast. Think back to 1996. If you're in a recruit's shoes and know what you know now, what advice would you give to them for navigating the process and making sure that they're on our radar? You know, a couple of things I think recruits need to keep in mind when they head into the process. First, they really have to do their homework. You know, go to the website, go online, read about the companies, read about the firms, and learn what ticks, what makes people at the different firms tick, and learn what the cultures are like as best you can before you go into the interview process and, and know sort of what you're getting into. That's the first thing, do your homework. The second thing is get out and meet people. You know, come to the recruiting events. It's not important that you come to every recruiting event. We know your students. Right? We know that you're trying to graduate. We know that your mission for being there and paying all that tuition money isn't to come to a different event every night. But you do need to get out and meet some people and make sure that we get to know you, you get to know us. Again, because at the end of the day, it really is a two-way connection that has to happen. And we have to really like what you bring to the table from a skill standpoint, but you also have to like us from the support and the impact that you can have working at a place like Bain & Company. And then the third thing is really prepare for your case interviews. You know, we talk a lot about case prep at Bain. We provide a lot of support for people on campus doing case prep. You can go visit some of the resources on joinbain.com for case prep. But at the end of the day, the interview really is important. And it's important that you've done everything that you can heading into that interview so that when, it, when it's game time, you're ready to go. Can you give an example of a recruit who really impressed you in the process? Some good, some good, any good recruiting stories here? Yeah, so I can't share some of the recruiting stories that probably might make us laugh the most. But what I would say is that uh, the best recruits come in, and it's very clear they've done a couple of things. One, they've done their homework. They know the difference between Bain and & Company and the other firms they may be considering. They know the difference between Bain and & Company and some of the industry jobs they're considering. And they really understand what it is that we do and why we're a special place. They understand that we're working for some of the top companies in the world we're working with their most senior executives and we're solving their toughest problems. And they're excited about that and they understand what's unique about our approach to those problems where it's not something off the shelf, it's not something that's academic, it's something that's very practical and it's something that actually makes a difference at the end of the day and they understand that and in their dialogue with us they can articulate why they're excited about that. That's the first thing. The second thing is that they really have done their case prep. They, they, it's clear that they've practiced the case interviews and they've taken this process seriously. And then the third thing that I think the best candidates do is they have fun during the process. They come in and they like to sit and have a business conversation. I realize that they're nervous when they first walk in, but those quickly leave the room once the conversation gets started. And then it's just two friends having a business conversation. Um, the other thing that I would say that a lot of people forget, they do all this case prep and they practice this and they read the book that and they meet with their friends and they do all these things. They forget all the interviewing 101 skills, a good handshake, eye contact, okay to smile every once in a while. All those types of things matter in the interview. And after a long day of interviewing, those are the things a lot of times that can help you stand out. I'm not from the US, although I live here now. But if, I was, um, if I'm from Boston, for example, and I'm really keen to work overseas, is it realistic, realistic for me as an American citizen to apply to Bain in London? Is that something that's realistic and is it worth me doing that in my cover letter? Is that something Bain can organize? We're a global firm, Martin. And the way we like to think about it is we're outgrowing all of the business school campuses and undergraduate campuses that we recruit at. We've been growing at close to 15% a year for the last two decades. And what that means is to fuel all of that growth, we actually need to hire all the best talent that we can find anywhere in the world. 
And so if you're a recruit and you're thinking about working for Bain & Company, you should know that we're hiring all the best people that we can find. Everybody who's talented and should be working at Bain & Company will get an offer to work for Bain & Company. And what that means is that if you're in the U.S. and you want to work in Europe or you want to work in Asia, or if you're in Europe and you want to come to the U.S., all you need to focus on is doing a great job in the interview and making sure that you know what it is you're asking for in terms of knowing the culture at Bain, knowing the type of work we do at Bain, knowing the type of impact we have at Bain, and knowing what it takes to be successful at Bain. And if you do those things and you get through the interview process, the geographic flexibility that you have in terms of maybe you want to work in Texas or the UK or in Singapore, that's not an issue at all. We work all of that out on the back end. Every year, you know, your team, or the team that we both work in, um, recruits for permanent positions and also for internships as well. A difference in the stuff we've talked about between, between the two as far as recruiting is concerned, or is it pretty much the same? I mean, it, both of them require case interviews, written interviews, resumes, and stuff like that, but any, any differences there? Yeah, so there are two ways that people can work with Bain during their summer while they're still at school. One is the associate consultant uh, internship program, the ACI program, and that happens before your graduation year. So in most four-year institutions, that's before your final year. The other one is the summer associate program, and that typically for a two-year MBA is the summer in between your two years at business school. Um, in both cases, the interview process is almost identical to the full-time process. The only difference is that in your first year of your MBA program, you may not know as much about consulting and as much about the industry as some people who have been there for a second year and who may have summered in the industry. Um, but the processes are completely identical. What I would say is that in both cases, you know, we're not really big into made-for-TV moments at Bain. What we actually do is we put them on real cases, they have real clients, they have real work to do, they're working on real case teams, and hopefully they're having a real impact. So we actually view our interns as a great resource for the team and for our clients because they come in and do phenomenal work in 10 weeks. Um, and again, it gives them a great chance to see what Bain & Company is about and what it's like to work on a real Bain case team. And it gives us a chance to see if they have those problem-solving skills, people skills, and team skills that I talked about earlier. And if that's a great fit, then they get, you know, ideally an offer to return at the end of the summer. Um, at the MBA level, over 90% of our interns get offers to return full time. And an even higher percentage of those interns accept that offer and join us when they graduate. So from my perspective as the global head of consultant recruiting, the intern program is a tremendous source of talent. Every intern that comes into Bain and Company, we do everything we can to get them a full time offer at the end of their summer. Great. Well, Keith, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Martin. Good discussion.